Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in the last couple of videos, we have learned about the comparator and the Smith trigger circuits. So now in this video, let us solve some problems based on this comparator and the Smith trigger. So here is the first example and it is based on the comparator. So in this example, this triangular wave is applied to this comparator and we have been asked to find the reference voltage for this comparator such that the output waveform has a 25% of duty cycle. Now if you observe over here, this input signal is applied at the non-inverting input terminal of this comparator. So whenever the input signal is greater than this reference voltage, at that time the output of this comparator will be high. And whenever it is less than the reference voltage, at that time the output of the comparator will be low. So first of all, let us assume that the reference voltage which is applied to this comparator is equal to 0 volt. So in that case, if you see, whenever the input signal is greater than 0 volt, at that time the output of the comparator will be high. And whenever it is less than 0 volt, at that time the output of the comparator will be low. So the output voltage of the comparator will look like this. So if you observe over here, for the 50% of time, the output of the comparator is high and for the 50% of time, the output of the comparator is low. So now, if you know the definition of the duty cycle, which is on time of the pulse divided by the total time, then for this case, the duty cycle of this output waveform will be equal to 50%. Because here, for the 50% of time, the output is high and for the 50% of time, the output is low. Now suppose if your reference voltage is less than 0 volt, in that case the output of this comparator will remain high for more than 50% of time and the output waveform will look like this. So now whenever the reference voltage is less than 0 volt, at that time the duty cycle of the output waveform will be greater than 50%. So now to achieve the 25% of duty cycle, the reference voltage for this comparator should be greater than 0 volt. So let us say we have set some positive reference voltage for this comparator and whenever we apply this reference voltage to this comparator then the output waveform will look like this. So whenever the input signal is greater than this reference voltage at that time the output of the comparator will be high and whenever it is less than 0 volt at that time the output of this comparator will be low. So whenever the reference voltage is greater than 0 volt at that time the duty cycle of this comparator will be less than 50%. Now if you see the time period of this triangular wave, the time period of this triangular wave is equal to 50 millisecond. So to achieve the 25% of duty cycle, the on time of this output waveform should be equal to 5 millisecond. That is the one fourth of the total time period. So we can say that the on time of this output waveform should be equal to 5 millisecond. Now one more thing if you observe over here, this triangular wave is a symmetric wave. So the output waveform will also be symmetric around this 5 millisecond time. So we can say that because of this symmetry, the time T1 and T2 are equal. And as the total on time should be equal to 5 millisecond, so the value of this T1 and T2 should be equal to 2.5 millisecond. So now we know that this is the time t is equal to 5 millisecond. So this point should be equal to 2.5 millisecond and this time should be equal to 7.5 millisecond. So now only thing that we need to find is the input voltage at time t is equal to 2.5 millisecond. So if we know that value, then we can find the reference voltage for which the output waveform will have a duty cycle of 25%. And it can be found by finding the slope of this triangular wave. So if you observe over here, in 5 millisecond, the output reaches from 0 to 5 volt. So we can say that the slope of this triangular wave for the 0 to 5 millisecond is equal to 5 volt divided by 5 millisecond. Or we can say that that is equal to 1 volt per millisecond. So in 2.5 millisecond, the output will reach at 2.5 volt. So we can say that the reference voltage should be equal to 2.5 volt. So whenever the reference voltage is equal to 2.5 volt at that time, 
the output waveform will remain on for 5 millisecond and for the rest of the time it will remain off and in this way we can achieve the duty cycle of 25 percent now instead of this 2.5 volt suppose if we set the reference voltage as minus 2.5 volt in that case the output waveform will look like this so in this case the output will remain low only for the 25 percent of time or we can say that for this case the duty cycle of the output waveform will be equal to 75 percent so in this way by changing the reference value we can change the duty cycle of the output waveform so now try to find the reference voltage such that the output waveform has a duty cycle of 10 percent and do let me know your answer in the comment section below okay so now let's move to the next example so in this example we have been given this circuit and for the given circuit we have been asked to find the value of this resistance r1 such that the hysteresis width of this circuit is equal to 1 volt and here assume that the saturation voltage is for the given circuit is equal to plus minus 10 volt now if you observe this circuit it is the example of a non-inverting speed trigger because here the input is applied at the non-inverting terminal and there is a positive feedback from output to the input side now here we have been given that the hysteresis width for the given Smith trigger is equal to 1 volt and we have already seen in the last video of Smith trigger that the hysteresis width is nothing but the difference between the upper and the lower threshold voltages so first of all for this circuit we will find the upper and the lower threshold voltages and using the given hysteresis width we will find the value of this resistor R1 so in the last video of Smith trigger we have seen that the upper threshold voltage for the non-inverting Smith trigger can be given by the expression minus R1 divided by R2 times voltage VL now for this case voltage VL is equal to minus 10 volt so we can say that the upper threshold voltage for the given non-inverting Smith trigger will be equal to 10 times R1 divided by R2 and similarly the lower threshold voltage for the given Smith trigger will be equal to minus R1 divided by R2 times the voltage VH and here the value of positive saturation voltage is equal to 10 volt so we can say that the lower threshold voltage will be equal to minus 10 times R1 divided by R2 now as I said the hysteresis width is nothing but the difference between upper and the lower threshold voltage so we can say that hysteresis width is equal to difference between this upper and the lower threshold voltage now here the value of this upper threshold voltage is equal to 10 times r1 divided by r2 and the value of this lower threshold voltage is equal to minus 10 times r1 divided by r2 so we can say that that is equal to 20 times r1 divided by r2 and here we have been given that the value of this hysteresis width is equal to 1 volt and we also know that here for the given circuit the value of r2 is equal to 20 kilo ohm so if we put the value of r2 as 20 kilo ohm then we will get the value of r1 as 1 kilo ohm so whenever we put the value of r1 as 1 kilo ohm then the value of this upper threshold voltage will be equal to 0.5 volt and the value of this lower threshold voltage will be equal to minus 0.5 volt and if you see the hysteresis curve for the given circuit then it will look like this so here the difference between this upper and the lower threshold voltage or the hysteresis width is equal to 1 volt so now let us move to the next example so now in this example we have been given this circuit which is designed using the op amp and for the given op amp the saturation voltages are plus minus 15 volt and we have been asked to find the upper and the lower threshold voltages for the given circuit so now if you observe this circuit it is the example of a inverting Smith trigger because here the input is applied at the inverting terminal and there is a positive feedback from output to the input side so now here to find the upper and the lower threshold voltage first of all let us find the voltage at this non-inverting terminal and let us say this voltage is equal to V plus so basically this voltage will decide the upper and the lower threshold voltage for the given Smith trigger 
Now for the inverting Smith trigger, the hysteresis curve will look like this. So whenever the output voltage of this Smith trigger is high, at that time the value of this V plus defines the upper threshold voltage for the Smith trigger. So whenever the input signal goes beyond this upper threshold voltage, at that time you will see the transition in the output from plus 15 to minus 15 volt. And similarly, when output is equal to minus 15 volt, at that time the value of this V plus will define the lower threshold voltage. So whenever input signal goes below this lower threshold voltage, at that time you will see the transition in the output voltage. And at that time output will go from minus 15 to plus 15 volt. So basically the two values of this voltage V plus will define the upper and the lower threshold voltage. So first of all assume that the output voltage V out is equal to plus 15 volt. And for this condition we will find the value of this V plus. And from this we will find the upper threshold voltage. So if the voltage at this node is V plus then the same voltage will also appear at this node. So to find the value of this V plus let us apply the KCL at this node. So applying KCL we can write V plus minus 3 volt divided by 5 kilo ohm plus V plus minus 15 volt divided by 10 kilo ohm that is equal to 0. So if we simplify it then we can write 2 V plus minus 6 volt plus V plus minus 15 volt that is equal to 0. It means that 3 V plus that is equal to 21 volt or we can say that V plus that is equal to 7 volt. So now here whenever this input voltage is greater than this voltage V plus at that time the output voltage will see the transition from plus 15 volt to the minus 15 volt and this voltage V plus is equal to the upper threshold voltage of the Smith trigger. So we can say that the upper threshold voltage for the Smith trigger is equal to 7 volt. So similarly to find the value of this lower threshold voltage let us assume that the output of this Smith trigger is equal to minus 15 volt and let us once again find the value of this V plus by applying the KCL. So if we apply the KCL at this node then we can write V plus minus 3 volt divided by 5 kilo ohm plus V plus minus minus 15 volt divided by 10 kilo ohm that is equal to 0. And if we simplify it then we can write 2 V plus minus 6 volt plus V plus plus 15 volt and that is equal to 0. So if we further simplify it then we can write 3V plus that is equal to minus 9 volt or we can say that V plus that is equal to minus 3 volt. So now here whenever this input voltage V in is less than this voltage V plus at that time the output voltage will see the transition from minus 15 volt to the plus 15 volt and this voltage V plus can be defined as the lower threshold voltage for the Smith trigger. So we can say that the lower threshold voltage for the Smith trigger is equal to minus 3 volt. So in this way the upper threshold voltage for the Smith trigger is equal to 7 volt and the lower threshold voltage is equal to minus 3 volt. And if you see the hysteresis curve for the given Smith trigger then it will look like this. So whenever input signal goes beyond this 7 volt at that time you will see the transition in the output voltage from plus 15 volt to the minus 15 volt and likewise whenever the input signal is less than this minus 3 volt at that time once again you will see the transition from minus 15 volt to the plus 15 volt. So now let us move to the next example. So now in this example we have been asked to design the Smith trigger circuit such that it has the following hysteresis curve. So basically we need to find the value of this R1, R2 and reference voltage such that we have the following hysteresis curve. So if you see the hysteresis curve over here, the positive and the negative saturation voltages are plus minus 10 volt respectively. And here the upper threshold voltage is equal to 2 volt and the lower threshold voltage is equal to minus 3 volt. 
So for this circuit, we can say that the value of VH is equal to 10 volt and the value of this low voltage VL is equal to minus 10 volt and here upper threshold voltage is equal to 2 volt and the lower threshold voltage is equal to minus 3 volt. So first of all, we will find the value of V plus and from this we will find the value of this R1, R2 and the reference voltage. So now to find the value of this V plus, let us apply the KCL at this node. So applying KCL, we can write V plus minus V in divided by R1 plus V plus minus V out divided by R2 that is equal to 0. And if we simplify it, then we will get the value of this V plus as R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this output voltage V out plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times the voltage V in. Now here if you observe there are two possibilities for this voltage V plus. So whenever this output voltage is high at that time we will have a different value of V plus and whenever the output voltage is low at that time we will have a different value of V plus. So let us say whenever the output voltage is low at that time the value of V plus is equal to V1. So for that case if we write the expression for the V1 then V1 will be equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VL plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage V in because here initially we have assumed that V out is equal to VL. So now whenever this voltage V1 is greater than the reference voltage at that time you will see the transition in the output voltage that means output voltage will go from low voltage to the high voltage and to achieve this condition the required input voltage is known as the upper threshold voltage of this Smith trigger. So to achieve this condition the voltage V1 should be greater than the reference voltage or we can say that for this condition R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VL plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times this input voltage V in should be greater than this reference voltage. Now here basically we are interested in the input voltage. So let us multiply both sides by the factor of R1 plus R2 divided by R2. So if we do so then we will get V in plus R1 divided by R2 times this voltage VL should be greater than this reference voltage multiplied by 1 plus R1 divided by R2 and if we shift this term on the right hand side then we can say that this input voltage V in should be greater than 1 plus R1 divided by R R2 times this reference voltage minus R1 divided by R2 times this voltage VL. Now here we have initially assumed that this output voltage V out is equal to VL and that is equal to minus 10 volt. So we can say that the input voltage V in should be greater than 1 plus R1 divided by R2 times this reference voltage plus 10 times R1 divided by R2. So now whenever this input voltage is just greater than this value at that time you will see the transition in the output voltage. So this voltage defines the upper threshold voltage of this Smith trigger. Similarly now let us assume that initially the output voltage V out is equal to high that is equal to 10 volt and for that condition let us find the expression for this input voltage. So let us assume that for this condition the voltage at this node is equal to V2. So we can write the expression of V2 as R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times this input voltage plus R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VH because initially here we have assumed that output voltage V out is equal to VH. So now whenever this voltage V2 is less than this reference voltage at that time you will see the transition in the output voltage that means output will go from high to low voltage. So for this condition we can say that this R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times this input voltage V in plus 
R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VH should be less than this reference voltage. And if we simplify this expression in terms of the input voltage, then we can say that the input voltage V in should be less than 1 plus R1 divided by R2 times this reference voltage minus R1 divided by R2 times this voltage VH. Now here the value of VH is equal to 10 volt. So now whenever this input voltage just less than this expression at that time you will see the transition in the output voltage and this voltage is defined as the lower threshold voltage of the Smith trigger. So in this way we got these two expressions for the upper and the lower threshold voltages. Now here we know that the upper threshold voltage is equal to 2 volt and the lower threshold voltage is equal to minus 3 volt. So now let us subtract the equation number 2 from this first equation. So if we subtract these two equations then we can say that 5 volt that is equal to 20 times R1 divided by R2 or we can say that the ratio of this R1 and R2 should be equal to 1 by 4. So if we assume the value of R1 as 1 kilo ohm then in that case the value of this R2 should be equal to 4 kilo ohm. So now let us put these values in this first expression. So if we put these values then we can write 1 plus 1 by 4 multiplied by this reference voltage plus 10 times 1 by 4 that is equal to 2 volt because the upper threshold voltage is equal to 2 volt. So if we simplify it then we can write 5 by 4 times this reference voltage plus 2.5 is equal to 2 or we can say that the reference voltage should be equal to minus 0.4 volt. So now for the given circuit whenever the ratio of this R1 and R2 is equal to 1 by 4 and the value of this reference voltage is equal to minus 0.4 volt at that time we can get this hysteresis curve. That means the value of this upper threshold voltage will be 2 volt and the lower threshold voltage will be equal to minus 3 volt. So in this way we can design the Smith trigger for the given hysteresis curve. So that's it for this video and I hope in this video you understood how to solve the problems based on the comparator and the Smith trigger. So if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.